During the Centre for the Prevention of Genocide's four years, it developed a groundbreaking worldwide early warning system for genocide and mass atrocities. It published over 25 reports, four review journals, had a TV and lecture series, and most importantly, it informed and lobbied policymakers of unfolding genocide and mass atrocities in real time. Located in Old Town Alexandria, and then Roslyn, Virginia, the staff, fellows and interns numbered between 20 to 25 and were typically students at DC area universities. Its board included Ambassador MacDonald of IMTD, William Douglas, the interim director of SAIS John Hopkins University, and John Heidenrich, author of How to Prevent Genocide. The first generation of early warning began with a simple wall chart to track the top danger zones where massacre or genocide was likely or imminent. Each monitor was given a primary and a secondary country. When writing a full or a micro report, monitors would include the history of the conflict, perpetrators, victims and the nature of the abuse. The legal department added international and other laws being broken. The specificity of the dates and instances documented in the reports helped policymakers have a clear-cut picture of the violations. Country reports were regularly sent to policymakers in Washington and abroad and were read at OHCHR, USAID and other government agencies and NGOs. During emergencies, staff would present directly to policymakers or their staff in order to inform and urge action. The on-ground networks the CPG built included embassy staff, human rights, and humanitarian aid workers, members of the press, clergy, and various UN and other international NGOs. Aside from its groundbreaking early warning, the CPG's legal section was unique in that it pinpointed specific laws being broken. Its micro-reports were no longer than one page front and back. The CPG also fielded a Survivors of Modern Genocide lecture and TV series though its mission remained in its early warning system. It received numerous letters from the UN, the US State Department, victims groups and other government agencies. On December 2nd, 2001, the CPG received its first real-time report of a massacre in Sulawesi, Indonesia. Staff confirmed and broke the story and lobbied US House members successfully to pressure the Indonesian government to intervene. Indonesia dispatched 4,000 troops to end the massacre. This was the first time in Indonesian history a government intervention had stopped a massacre. In the fall of 2001, Joanna and Eugene, two interns, uncovered a government-made famine in Nuba, which was confirmed by Bush pilots who delivered food aid, and presented the findings to USAID. USAID, with WFP, made unscheduled airdrops of sorghum for 30,000 people. 500 Nuba still starved, but this information was invaluable for those who survived. In 2002 and 2003, the CPG reported in real time the Bunia and Bukavu massacres to the UNHCHR in time for it to strengthen the UN-flagged French troop mandate. The information aided the effort to include use of force in the mandate language to combat militias when civilians were being attacked. The CPG produced four reports with detailed evidence on LRA atrocities and genocide in Uganda. CPG Director O'Brien testified in a congressional subcommittee hearing on LRA massacres with Atroli tribal leaders, the first LRA awareness raising presentation on Capitol Hill. CPG began receiving unconfirmed lists of Darfur massacre victims in late 2003. It made a determination of genocide in January 2004 and organised the first rally for Darfur in Washington. It introduced Darfur leaders to human rights activists as the CPG closed its doors. Other notable reports include a nuclear risk report on India-Pakistan. The report highlighted a lack of military protocol, communication and confidence building measures. It was written by a former US congressman and nuclear non-proliferation experts and was placed on the table at the first meeting between the nations. They agreed to put these three issues on the next meeting agenda. 
The centre also played a role highlighting the attempt of the Russian government to close Chechen refugee camps during the middle of winter. Since the CPG closed in 2004, O'Brien has headed companies, political organisations, taught human rights at the University of South Florida, and he has recently finished his book, In Case of Genocide, Break Glass, How We End 100 Years of Genocidal Indifference. O'Brien's book chronicles 100 years of genocide prevention work, including a clear-cut prescription for how we can end genocide within a generation. The appendices include an easy-to-use genocide prevention manual 